I'm going to go and take the drone out for a fly and I'm going to show you what I do and what it's all about. And this is it. This is the northernmost end of one of the lakes and this is just a small pond. But it's a pretty nice film place to film. That's what it was for today. I actually picked up this chair the other week so this makes things a lot more comfortable. do so this is the drone I'm going to be flying I won't go into a lot of detail about exactly which one it is and what it can do and what it can't do but this is the DJI Mavic 2 zoom they do a pro and they do a zoom so this is the zoom version a pretty compact drone packed full of uh, sensors and capability and electronics uh, this is the gimbal cover if I just remove that so this is the camera and the gimbal as it's a really sunny day I'm actually going to be using the neutral density filter uh, and ND16 today um, because it's really quite bright and we need to slow that shutter speed down if we're going to get any nice video footage. Plenty of other places you can find out about the drone if you want to go into detail but basically this unfolds this way. And there we have the final shape if you will. This is packed full of sensors, you've got downward facing LEDs, downward optical sensors, downward facing infrared, forward facing sensors, rear facing sensors, sideways facing sensors and even a, an infrared upwards facing sensor so pretty much senses all directions not all the time but almost all the time depending on what flight mode you're flying in. Anyway enough of that let's get it in the air. This is the transmitter, pretty easy to set up and fold the antennas this area is where your phone or display device can go and pretty nifty on this this version you get these these sticks which are replaceable and removable just helps with some of the uh, packing so they don't break off makes it easy to store I've actually got the iPhone 10 which I'm plugging in today. This is actually the first time I've used this phone with this uh, setup, so it seems to work quite well. It seems to fit okay. Straighten the propellers out. Double tap to connect. Gimbal does its calibration. Classic DJI sound there. So now I've got the aircraft connected, it's, it's powered up, ready to go. Um, the app's running, the transmission's good. I just need to go through a few settings to make sure that it's gonna be safe to fly before I actually do finally take off. 
Um, I'll put the uh, the view on screen for you to see. So looking at this here, I can see through the camera, which is always good. The gimbal's working. The zoom's working. I've got my histogram showing here, which will be important later on. What I will do is I'm going to fly in auto mode to begin with. Um, let the camera do all the work, keep the colours normal. So if I click those three dots and looking at the drone here, let's go through a few drone settings first of all. So the drone itself, currently in P mode, which is positioning mode. Return to home altitude is, is selected. Multiple flight modes, I want to keep that on. So that I can change. My return to home altitude, I want to keep that at about, uh, this is in meters, so keep that about 70 which is um, just over 200 feet. I'm in a bit of a dip here as well because I'm obviously in a, you'll see when we get flying, but I'm in a bit of a dip where, that's where the lakes are actually um, situated. So I'm a bit lower than you'd think really, but uh, we'll keep that at 70. Next. So the return to home altitude is 70. Maximum flight altitude. So here in the UK, and a lot of other countries to be honest, is uh, 400 feet is the maximum. Again, I'm in a, a safe area to fly airspace wise, it's class D here and there's, there's only there's very little general aviation around anyway, so I'll be look, on the lookout for that. Uh, but maximum out flight altitude in meters, that means we should put 120. So we know that uh, we're not gonna be able to go any higher than 120 meters or 400 feet. And if we do return to home automatically, the aircraft will come back at 70 meters, which is plenty high enough around here. There's no other obstacles or power lines nearby, which I'm gonna be uh, going near today. Sensors are all on. That's okay. That's okay. Battery level's looking good. Camera's okay, that's what I want. So again, to double check. 70 metre return to home, 120 metre maximum flight altitude. Now we just need to look at camera settings. So again, I'm going to put this in auto mode. In fact, I'll put set things up for later. We're going to do this in 4K. I'm going to be doing 4K 25 frames a second. So full 4K, 25 frames a second. MP4, I'm happy with white balance is sunny, which it is. Uh, style is none. Keep that as it is. Colour is normal. I want that to be the DJI colour settings straight out. H264 video codec. That's what I want. When I take any photographs, I'll want to take JPEG and RAW. That'll do nicely. I'll I'll switch to these settings later on um, and mess with those. But uh, for now, I'm going to be in uh, full auto mode. So the manual mode won't really matter. So the camera's going to control shutter speed uh, itself and the colour is just DJI colour so it will do all the calculations for itself. I'll set my EV to, to there. If you look at my histogram just here, that's not bad. We're not too overexposed and we're not too underexposed. Now we might get a bit of a change when we go into different environments like more sky and less ground and more ground and less sky later on. But at the moment, uh, in auto mode, I'm happy with that. And it's actually currently calculating one one hundredths of a second. So I'm doing 25 frames a second. So I'd like my frame rate to be, as everybody knows, twice the frame rate. So I'm looking for 50. So a hundredths twice that again, not too bad. Um, again, I'll go into manual mode later and show you what that means for me when I'm doing things uh, differently. So before I do finally take off, I just want to check everything else is okay. So I've got 95% battery, which is good. I've got 17 satellites, which is excellent. And I'm in GPS mode. Uh, the drone's ready, I'm ready. Just a visual check before we do anything. There's nobody around. It's still safe to fly. There's nothing above me, no aircraft and no birds. So there's no reason why I can't take off at this point. Two ways of doing that manually start the motors and lift off on your own or you can do it, do it with two gestures just a press and a swipe and we'll do that version now so the top left we'll press that button there and swipe that and up she goes
as you can see. Absolutely rock solid in the hover. Give you a 360 in the hover. To climb up on the stick. Up she goes. easy as that. Must remember this crucial part, must remember to record the video. So I'm going to record the air from the aircraft now. So I can see the counters moving. So now we'll take it for a spin. I think we'll go over this lake, well, the first pond. We'll just do a slow fly. Flying it manually now. We'll just rise up over these trees. And reveal the lake. So we're pretty much facing south now. Dead south, that is. We'll climb a little more, a bit more forward momentum. Height is uh, 80 feet. Keeping the aircraft in sight, visual line of sight always. Hold short about there and I'll climb up. We're at uh, almost 200 feet. And we'll go all the way up to 400 feet. Just climbing now, I'm not actually moving forwards, I'm just climbing. 370. There, it's just stopping short and warning me at 390. Have a quick look round. With 360 from up here. Again, not bad visibility, but not the best. Looking back to where we've come from. There's us down there. That's actually where, um, that's looking west and that's where the sun will set later so I'm actually hoping to get a sunset video and some nice photos over those features. Again we're in sort of um, mid-May now so the summer's on its way and everywhere's looking pretty green. Just flying further forwards. Sideways and backwards. Try and get some nice cinematic shots. So we'll get a slightly different perspective on things from here and we'll fly backwards and to the right and come back towards ourselves. Oh, I can see the aircraft. Nothing to worry about, no aircraft coming. Pan the camera down a little. Nice view, nice reflections on here. That ND filter should be doing uh, justice now, where even though it's in auto mode, it will keep the shutter speed fairly low in bright conditions, so.
look up into the sun, see how it handles that. Pretty good. Just going to descend. And come back closer to us now and Hello? Again, let's put it in sports mode. We'll get some speed up. Again, do something a bit more dramatic this time. Off we go. Currently doing 34.2 miles an hour, 118 feet, 40 miles an hour, a little bit more speed when I uh, take off the climb, and we'll keep that momentum and we'll do a big loop. over those cows just to the side of them it's a bit of a, a bit of a boggy area here which is quite interesting take a look at that on the way past now we're doing 44.9 miles an hour 45 miles an hour so clearly there's a wind from the south southerly wind which probably explains the warmer weather at the moment We're going with the wind. It zips around. It's a really fast drone for the size and how compact it is. All right, back into P mode. Show you what you can get with these zoom shots and the difference in perspective. If we zoom in down lake, it's quite different. There's a, a very uh, loud aircraft coming, so I'm just going to descend slightly over the water. Nothing for me to worry about. down to just about 100 feet. You can see him there. There he is. He's all right, I'm okay. Again, if we do like a side, a nice slow sideways shot, it's quite nice cinematic effects. You can also have this effect, uh, the dolly zoom effect, if you fly forwards and zoom out, you get that effect. Which is quite cool. Something you can only do on this drone really, unless you go to the uh, high-end movie, movie drones. And the opposite, if you maybe reverse and zoom in at the same time. Get that effect. So we'll keep the sun to the rear of the camera now and we'll climb slightly and we'll do some some nice shots like this.
I'll tilt my camera up a bit. Just see the drone there. Climb a little so I can still see it. There it is. Some nice cinematic shots, that's where the guys go fishing down there. And this is in auto mode, so again the camera's doing all the work. I'm being quite lazy with that in that respect. And I'll, uh, I'll show you what I would normally like to do. I have filmed this place properly in, in, in another video, but um, what is nice to do is to go in manual mode. So if I go to my camera settings here, Oh, I can't actually change it while it's recording, so I'll stop the recording and start again. So now I'm actually filming in manual mode and as you can see I've got my shutter speed at 1 50th which is twice my frame rate which gives me some nice uh, cinematic motion blur and I'm actually, um, take, the bit, take away that, I'm actually now filming in what's called D-Cine like mode so it's quite a flat colour compared to what you've just seen but that gives me the capability of um, colour grading a lot easier in, in post-production so this is when you can get shots like this my histogram is looking pretty healthy 2.8 so certainly down to f 3.8 when I'm fully zoomed in so that ND16 was not a bad guess to be honest again if I nice steady movements Nice cinematic shots. Maybe zoom out on this one. Pan left. Zoom out at the same time. Not bad. Do an orbit here. Plenty of nice countryside to see today, and it's lit this afternoon. It's not quite golden hour. It's about five o'clock now, so it's getting on a bit, but it's still decent lighting conditions. Fly back towards ourselves. Again, so there's a multitude of things you can do. Multiple different flight modes, you've got hyperlapse, quick shot, active track, point of interest, waypoints, tap fly, cinematic mode. They're very clever in what they do. I'll zoom in on myself down there. As you can see, when you've got your fixed shutter speed and you're in manual mode, you're at risk of your exposure changing and your histogram showing you that. Sometimes it's going to look great, sometimes it's going to look not so great, but it gives you the chance to change that in post later on. Get 
of that fly. And that's it. That's all there is to it. We're on 29%. Can't complain, you get a great, uh, you get a great battery life out of this drone. They advertise about 31 minutes, but in reality you get about 23 safely. It's a nice shot with a reflection. Slightly uh, overexposed in manual mode at that point, but nothing we can't fix later. Forward on the stick. Come home. And before we come home, I'll put it back into uh, auto mode so that the colours look nicer for you as it comes straight out of the drone. Stop recording momentarily. Auto mode. And then we need to go into the colour settings as well. So my colour profile back to normal. Start recording again. On we go. Move my histogram a bit, a bit easier down there. There we are, just poking out behind that tree. can also move the camera a fair degree upwards as well without getting the propellers in which is always a bonus twenty four percent battery so we'll be getting a warning soon quite a nice drone to fly as well I haven't really changed any of the settings since I got it. None of the rates or any of the, uh, the speeds of anything, even the gimbal, I've kept the same. And we'll just do some low flying just before we land. Flying this mostly by uh, visual of line of sight now. We've forget the FPV times like this so we can actually see what we're doing we don't crash into anything so there's the first battery warning so we'll cancel that because I'm close enough we've got another minute or so Cool. We're on 18%, so we'll bring it in for a landing. I like to land with the, uh, the tail in. Anywhere between 20 and 15% to preserve my battery. Bring it down slowly. I'll show you the last part. Down the stick. Stop recording. And there we have it, easy as that. So that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how I think about my flights and uh, the kind of camera shots and the kind of settings that I use. Hope you enjoyed that. 